first thing we're going to start off with is a clean jar and if you haven't seen the tutorial for this already I've done a DIY on this and one of the first things we're going to do the jar is draw out the shape of the house but we're going to start off with the lid first and the lid is so simple you just want to take some fake moss cover the lid in glue and then we're just going to stick it down you want to cover all the top and then the edges as well because otherwise it's going to show and we don't really want it to show once it's on the Hobbit house and if you've missed any areas just put a little bit of glue and then dabble some of the fake moss on top so it sticks once that's done make sure that everything's pressed down really firmly and we're going to move on to the jar what you want to start off doing is taking any kind of permanent marker and we're going to sketch out the shape of the door and then the windows then we're going to take some clay and you just can use standard air drying clay, you don't have to use anything fancy. I'm going to roll it into a ball and if you don't have a rolling pin, here's a really cheap trick, use the edge of a cup. And we're going to roll this into a circle and then cut it out. Now obviously you can use a knife for this but you can use whatever you have to hand as well. Next you want to make a line of it and roll it so that it's quite thin, flatten it out so that it's not completely circular. We're going to wet the edges before we stick it down, and then cut off the ends so that they fold really nicely into each other. Press everything down, and then I'm going to take the very edge of a spatula, and I'm just going to press a line to make it look like bricks. Now you can either do this very lightly, or you can just cut right through it so that it's more brick-like. Depends on what you want to do. And then just press everything down again so that there's nothing coming loose. And roll a little round ball and just pop that in the middle of the doorknob. Now to draw the pattern of the wood on the door, I'm going to be taking a clay shaper but you can use the edge of a pencil or anything that's a little pointy, just not sharp. And I'm going to draw the lines of each little piece of wood and then add all little textures. And if you don't have anything like this, you can also use a cocktail stick, that would work as well. Next we're going to roll another little roll and cut it in half so that it's not completely round. And obviously you can use a knife for this, but I'm just going to be using a little art spatula. And then we're going to be doing exactly the same trick that we did for the door, just for the windows. And you want to make sure that the surface is wet before you do this, or wet the underside of the clay so that it sticks. I'm going to use a clay shaper just to neaten things up a little bit. And now we're going to move on to wall filler, and you can get this from any kind of DIY store. And you want to mix it quite thickly, otherwise it's going to drip everywhere and be a nightmare to apply. And then I'm just going to pass it all the way around the door and the window and make sure that it really covers the edge of the door and the windows because otherwise it might mean that the door and the window can just fall out later. So we need this to act as a little hook to hold it onto the jar. If you don't have wall filler, another thing that you can use is just plaster or plaster of Paris. Now once this is done and once the clay has dried, I'm going to be using two different acrylic paints and we're going to paint the door and also the door frame. I'm going to be using two different colours. I'm going to be using a lighter brown and I'm going to be filling in the little slices that I've done down the clay so that it looks a little bit more like mortar. And we're going to apply a few coats of this. There's a lonely little maze waiting, shaking and trembling. She's looking for something to free her. Afraid to laugh or to cry or to sing to make them Now don't worry about being a little bit messy, especially around the windows, because anything that's on the glass is easy enough to clean up later. So if you're having a little trouble getting right into the corners, just dabble it all over and we'll clean it up later. And now we're going to be using a dark brown and we're going to alternate between each brick. So one brick will be light brown and one will be dark brown. Make sure that you bring it all the way down into the edges. Clear this water, I don't want to lose my way again. And next we're going to paint the door green. Now one thing that I ended up doing later on, which I didn't end up doing in this tutorial, is I ended up using a green nail varnish, because it gives it that beautiful enamel look. And another thing that I didn't show in the tutorial, but that you can really do to make it look a little bit more authentic, is you could add a glow in the dark room on the very corner of it, so that it looks like the room that Gandalf scratched on the door just if you want to be a little bit more nerdy about it. And the last thing I'm going to be doing is using black nail varnish, and I'm going to be using this for two things. The first thing I'm going to start off with is the windows, and you want to use the end of a pencil or a cocktail stick, anything which is slightly pointy, means that you can apply it accurately. 
we're just going to draw the window bars. Now obviously you have to do this after you've cleaned the glass, otherwise things are going to get a little bit tricky and messy later on. And then once I've done that, I'm going to use it for the doorknob. And that's it. You're done. Thank you.